Man, I really miss pre-rendered backgrounds. Okay, hear me out. Games today look amazing. More and more we are itching closer and closer to what I guess would be photorealism. It's not just the graphics that look good, but the minute details and animations, the little bells and whistles peppered throughout the world, and those juicy, juicy pore textures. Mm. And all this comes at the low, low cost of overworking game devs to the point of harm. Hey, maybe, can we not do that maybe? I and despite games looking better and better every single year, I find myself getting more and more nostalgic for a time where games looked worse. While the characters and the buildings and the everything in between used to look like this, there was one simple trick developers used to make their games seem bigger, more detailed, and more alive than they ever really were. And that trick was pre-rendered backgrounds. A pre-rendered background is just like it sounds. A piece of art is made in an external program, usually to a very high quality, and then exported and use as the backdrop in the game. The devs then add collision to match up with the player model and boom, your game suddenly went from looking like this, ugh, to this, yay! It's a simple trick, but it was needed as trying to render an environment like this in real time probably would have set your house on fire. Oh God, ah! Uh! And I don't know why or how to explain it, but there's just something about the look of these pre-rendered backgrounds, most specifically the ones from the late 90s that just look so, Magical. And I'll just say it now, I don't think I'm gonna be able to articulate exactly why by the end of the video either. So if you understand me, woohoo! If not, let me show you a few examples and maybe you'll see by the end. So anyways, here's your ticket all aboard the snug train choo-choo. And as usual, we have to start with The Legend of Zelda. No, you can't refund your ticket. The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time was a very ambitious game. And I think to help realize some of the scope the game was aiming for, the developers decided to pre-render some of the backgrounds in the game. I love all of the treehouse interiors in Kikiri Forest. I'm guessing they used them here because the wood textures would have been too ugly or something, but pre-rendering it just gives these areas this really unique feeling. And then the standout in the game is just, of course, Castle Town. Buildings and material textures in particular from the 90s just have something about them that is so cool. And this area is no exception. It really makes the town feel just so much more detailed and important than other areas in the game. And because it's just a flat 2D image, it lets way more character models populate the screen, really giving the place a bustling vibe. And then one of my favorite uses is here outside the Temple of Time. We get this beautiful low angle that really shows the grandiose nature of the temple, as well as an intimidating look at Death Mountain. Cool. And with the detail allowed from this technique, they were able to really show the destruction of Castletown in the future, in a way they wouldn't have been able to have rendered in real time. In fact, this area would have felt so much emptier and less lively if rendered in real time. Which, fun fact, if we look at these beta screenshots, we can see that it was at one point. And look how boring it looks, dude, Jesus Christ. I just love the way Castletown looks so much. And then you swap over to the 3DS version and... Look, I, I understand that this looks better, but there was just something that was lost in translation and I, I don't know what. The pre-renderedness of these games is why I still swap between the N64 and 3DS versions for my yearly playthroughs. Be it these backgrounds or the menus or the items, there is just something about it that makes me feel good. <laughs> A not so legal leak last year showed us these pre-rendered items and objects in high definition quality and bro, this shit is like crack to me, oh my God. I still think I'm recovering from the amount of serotonin that released in my brain that day. I mean, just look at the spider, this bottle, the boot. I are you guys seeing this or is it just me? It must be the lighting or the way surfaces reflect, but there is just something here that modern day renders do not have. Speaking of the Giga Leak from last year, a lot of high definition scans of Mario 64 came to fruition. And again, I can't pinpoint exactly why, but there's just something about how this looks that I cannot get enough of. I love the saturation of Mario's red. I love the textures of the stone. It's all fantastic. There's this one picture of Metal Mario that I used to see all the time as a kid. And this is the most pre rendered 90s picture that will ever exist. It's got those metallic reflections, it's got those weird surface textures, and it's rad as fuck. Fans have caught on that this look is really interesting, and there's an entire remake of Mario 64 with this style, and it looks amazing. It's almost a shame that we'll never see an official Mario game or remake with this aesthetic. But I don't know, I guess Nintendo are too busy re-releasing the game in 4x3 and then locking it behind the Disney vault. What the fuck, you greedy bastards? The way in which game art was rendered back then is just so charming to me. I mean, look at the Japanese box art for Mario Tennis 64. Isn't this so cute? And the way that they all have that 90 pre-rendered crispiness, it just makes me love it all the more. Then you look at the new Mario Tennis covers and they're all so clean and modern Disney-esque and just, ugh. Okay, so I just looked at the title of the video and I realized that this wasn't about pre-rendered graphics in general. So, 
This is kind of awkward. Okay, let me get back on track. One of the big advantages of using this technique was how much detail they could pack into your world for such a small amount of memory. Games like Final Fantasy VII use this excellently. While it may look a little dated now, all these backgrounds were incredible for the time and not only hold an immaculate amount of detail, but when you compare what this game looked like to other games at the time, oh, it's not even a competition. Having buildings that weren't just cubes but had somewhat detailed textures and complicated geometry just makes the world so much more visually interesting and impressive compared to the rest. And again with that juicy 90s pre-rendered magic smeared all over it, oh it's just so good. And again, it eats up so little memory it's almost a no-brainer for the devs. I mean if you try to render this on a real PS1, I'm pretty sure Sephiroth himself would come out of the console- holy fuck- no, oh, he's hot! Ah oh, he's hot! A couple years later, and on the next generation of hardware, Final Fantasy X also used pre-rendered backgrounds. But because of the jump in technology, and because the characters have higher quality models, it makes these areas look really damn good. I mean, especially for 2001. I mean, here's another game from 2001. <laughs> looks like shit. Now look at Final Fantasy X. Come on, man, look at it. Who's laughing now? Who's <laughs> laughing now? One of my favorite childhood games that no one ever really talks about is Nancy Drew. They were these point and click puzzle games based on the books of the same name, where you take the role of the titular detective and have to solve a mystery. Now I'm gonna be real with you guys. Come closer. These games terrified me as a kid. I try and play them with my sister or my cousins, and every time I did, I would have nightmares for days on end. <laughs> And I think a really big reason why I found them so creepy was because of the way it looked. The uncanny valleyness of pre-rendered environments lends itself really well to horror. Because you look at this hallway and it looks pretty good, but you know it's not real. So something just feels off. And although it's just a still image, the way the shadows envelop bits of the screen, or the cleanliness of it all, or the way that everything looks too quiet is genuinely kind of spooky. It feels like at any point something might jump up and get you. I vividly remember being in a scary area and then clicking so fast to move out of there and get back to a safe part. <sighs> okay. Okay, we're fine. Whether it be a haunted mansion, an abandoned castle, or a silent ranch, there's something about the pre-rendered backgrounds here that to this day still give me the creeps. And I feel if these were remade and rendered in real time, they wouldn't be anywhere near as scary. But mostly because the characters would no longer look like that. Oh, that's not a human, what the fuck? So when you take this idea of pre-rendered backgrounds and apply it to a real horror game, such as the remake for Resident Evil, it escalates the scares to a whole new level. There is something hauntingly beautiful about the mansion you explore in Resident Evil. The way the light bounces off the marble floor, how the corners bleed shadows, how everything has that pre-rendered goodness. Every room, hallway, and all the fuck off amount of doors look interesting and warrant a cheeky swish of the eye to explore its nooks and crannies. And one of the big advantages of pre-rendered backgrounds with horror is through the use of fixed camera angles. Obviously a picture is just a flat image, you can't move it around once it's in the game. So when a character moves too far away or goes through a door, they need to change this image to a different angle. This is what created half the horror of the original Resident Evil evil, as the angles are brilliantly chosen in such a way that the devs always show you exactly what they want to show you, and often use this to brilliantly build up suspenseful moments or scares. It's genuinely terrifying, dude, dude this game is so scary. I sound like a broken record at this point, but if they remade this game without the pre-rendered backgrounds or with a free controlled camera, it wouldn't have anywhere near the same amount of that uneasy atmosphere and that brilliantly juicy horror. In fact, I know there are a lot of fans of Resident Evil 2 who were upset that that game's remake had a third person controlled camera perspective, because the horror just can't be the same. And with Capcom now focusing the franchise on hot, tall vampire mummies, I wonder if anyone else, indie or AAA, will pick up this old style of game design and give it a go. Okay, time to wrap things up. The juicy and crunchy look of the Age of Empires 2 map, the various OG Mario Party boards, this one awful looking Sonic Adventure cutscene- okay, actually maybe that wasn't the best example. Are pre-rendered backgrounds dead? Yeah, kind of. But they still survive today in some ways. The modern equivalent of this technique, I guess, seems to be using paintings as the backgrounds. Such as the beautiful hand drawings from Bravely Default, or these stylistically detailed backdrops in Sage Frontier 2, or this one cutscene from Halo 3, which always gave me the same vibe as that one awful scene in Return of the Jedi. <laughs> but if we're strictly talking about pre-rendering a 3D environment into an image that is then used as the background, apart from the Five Nights at Freddy's games, I'm hard pressed to find a game that's done it in the last 15 years. But maybe you guys know of one that me and my massive intellect somehow missed. So if you do, let me know down in the comments. But hey, we got through it. A whole video where I kind of tried to describe something to you and maybe succeeded? M maybe I did? I don't know. But if you do get me, let me know and tell me what some of your favorite pre-rendered backgrounds are down below. And I don't know, like, subscribe, share. Did you know that only 10 of you are subscribed? Shut up. Have a good day. Stay snug. Bye.